Right, so welcome to a new guide on this channel and on this occasion is the P016 factory. This is not a review, it's a complete deep dive guide about this device. Everything on this guide is in chapters, so if you look at the description or the timeline, you can jump to a section or skip the ones you don't want. So if you like all this, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee, you can. All the links are at the description. Right, so let me give you first a brief introduction and then we will dive deeper into each little thing. So this works like a sequencer. You have 16 patterns, that's why you have 16 steps right here, 16 positions. You have 16 patterns. Each pattern can have 16 steps and each step is also a sound. It can be an effects or in this case, uh, in the case of this PO, it could be a play style. So you can audition all the different sounds that you get by holding the sound and selecting a sound. So from the all the way from the 1 to all, all the way to the 16 is going to be a sound. So to select a sound, you need to press and hold the sound and then select maybe the number 1. That's going to be just this sound. If I do the same, hold the sound and go to the number 2, that's going to be a different sound and so on and so on. If I go to the number 6, it's going to be a different sound. If I go to the 10, Again, just a different sound. So you have a lot of different sounds. Now, if you go all the way to the 15, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be the sound for this one. But if I go to the 16, we are going to be getting something different. So if I play it, notice that what we get, we get a drum kit on each different step. So why, how this works is like, yeah, is like uh, you have two different channels. One channel is going to be the melodic part, which is, you know, the one all the way to the 15. And if you select the 16, it's going to be like a separate channel where you have different, uh, you know, percussion uh, elements or per percussion sounds. So we're going to use them in a minute when we learn how to record sequences. Uh, so this is a pattern based device. So you have 16 patterns that you can use. So to change patterns and to play them, you will need to go to pattern. And once you hold them, you hold it, he's going to ask you which pattern did you want? Do you want to play? Maybe I want to play the pattern number I don't know, four. And if I select that one and then play it, it's just going to be playing it. You can change this on the go. If I go to pattern, just press and hold and maybe go to the five, it's going to await a cue to the next pattern and so on and so on. If I go to the seven or eight, it's going to be changing the patterns. Right? Super simple, right? You just hold pattern and change the pattern. Now, you don't need to do this while playing. You just can go to pattern. Maybe, I don't know, go to pattern number one, select it, it's not playing, and then do the playing back. Right? You can change the BPM by tapping the BPM button that you have right there. And right there, right there at the top, it will give you different profiles. In this case, it's going to say disco. So if you keep tapping, it's going to give you different tempos. Hip hop, then, uh, you know, disco and then techno. So hip hop is 80 BPMs per second and you have it right there. It's going to say 80. Then you have the disco and then you have the techno. And if I play something and you can change the BPM on the go just like this so these are the three different profiles that you get just by tapping the bpm but what if you want to fine tune the tempo you can do it you need to hold the bpm just press and hold and then the b knob is going to be the fine tuning of the bpm so you can go all the way down to 60 or go all the way up to 240 bpms per second Right, so the A and the B knob are really important. They will control different params of each sound, but it really depends on where you're standing or what you want to do. The A and the B will do different things. If I play a sound just like this, let me just stand maybe on a different on a different sound. If I go to the A and change it, that is that it's modifying the sound. And right there, it's gonna let you know how much of A you're doing and how much B you're doing. So all the different sounds will react differently when you change the A and the B. If I go to maybe, let's say, I don't know, a different sound, just like maybe this one, maybe that one. So if I play it back, this one is just changing the ratios with the A and doing something else with the B, which is, I be believe, is just the depth. So it's like an FM synth, right? That's what it does. So all the different sounds uh, will do different things with the A and the B. 
But, you know, the main takeaway of this is that the A and the B, here is where you tweak the sound. Right here, you just need to select whatever sound, and then you just move the A and the B, and you just fine-tune the sound you want to work with. But also, when we are recording or playing, the A might change the pitch of whatever it is that you're doing on the, in, on the step, and the B can change the step length. Now, don't worry, when we talk about creating sequences, we are going to be talking about this. So, you know, we're going to use it later. So I'm going to be going maybe to a different pattern and I'm going to be playing back. What if the volume is too low? So what you can do, you can hold the BPM, just press it and hold it and it will just, you know, give you different lights right here. So this is the volume. If I go all the way to one, that's, you know, really low. But as I keep going up, it's going to go up in volume. And you can go really loud, you know. But for me, in this case, 11 is more than fine. All right, so this is pretty much it. Still, we need to talk about how creating patterns and, you know, doing everything else this can offer. Now, if you are worried about the batteries, this goes off after five minutes of inactive playing. So, you know, it doesn't consume that much. Still, if you want to remove the batteries and, then you know, put, them, put the batteries again, uh, you know, you, you don't have to do it. Again, it consumes very little when you're not using it. What consumes a lot are the lights, but they go off when you're just not using it after five minutes. Now, if you want to know how much battery life you have left, you can go to sound, just hold that one, and then go to BPM. I'm going to be holding it, and notice this, the number right there is changing. It's telling me that I have 95. So this is the battery life. I have 95% of battery, so you can know how much you have left. Right, so let's talk about creating patterns. Of course, you can go maybe to pattern number one, just holding the pattern and going to the number one, just playing this back. I just edit that one, but sometimes you want to start from the scratch. So let's say I want to clear everything that we have on the pattern number one, just, you know, start over. So what you need to do, you need to, you need to go to the key key, right? <laughs> I know it sounds weird. Uh, this button calls key. So you need to go there, just pr uh, make sure that you're standing on that pattern. And when you go to key and then you press pattern, you press and hold, it's going to erase the whole information you have for that pattern. So you really need to make sure that you want to do this because if you delete it there's no way there's no going back so maybe if i go to a different pattern and i play it you know i get it but if i want to go back to the pattern number one is a completely empty pattern so again make sure that you really want to delete it Right, so you have two main ways of creating patterns. You have live recording, or you can add steps like a normal step sequencer. So first we're gonna use it as a normal standard step sequencer, and then we will do the live recording. Okay, so if I go to pattern, I make sure that I'm standing on the pattern number one. So the first thing you need to do, you need to select the sound, the sound that you want to work with. And remember how we select sounds. We go to sound, we press and hold, and then we just select the number one, number two, number three, and you know, whatever sound that you you want to work with. I'm gonna go to there, just select it. If I play it, I get that one. If I go to the number two, I get a different sound. So I'm gonna be working with the number one, right? So this is going to be the sound I want on my sequence. So once you do that and you select your standing on that sound, BO knows that this is the sound you want to use. So then you use it, you create a sequence and it will use that sound. So to add steps to the sequence, the only thing you need to do in this case, without playing, you need to go to right. If I press right, notice that right here you have an icon, the rec icon. So this means that now you're standing on the sound number one, so you can punch in some steps and then it will just play the sequence and you are going to be getting those ones. So notice that I'm just playing, you know, one, 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 one. So if I play it back, I just get it back. If I keep adding more steps, I'm just going to be getting them. One thing that you need to notice right now is that the same, uh, when we add a step in this mode, it's always the same pitch. We have a way of changing the pitch, don't worry, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So, okay, so when I play a sound and I change the A and the B, I know and we know that we have, we are just changing the sound. So, when I uh, record the sequence, it's going to take this into the into account if I do right, and we have the rec icon right there, and I punch in some notes. Notice that we are getting it. Let me just make it a little bit more obvious. Just gonna go up all the way up. I gotta get out of rec, of course. So I'm gonna be using that sound. All right, so I'm gonna do it like that. And I'm just gonna be playing it. Notice that we get it. 
if I go the other way and I go all the way down on the A and all the way in the B, we can really, like I'm gonna go out, out of wreck and I play it back, we can really hear the difference, right? But if I play it back now, notice that it's just a completely different sound. Still, we have a way of changing the A and the B and the pitch, you know, uh, when we create a sequence. Right, so I'm gonna start over and we know that the A and the B are just modifiers and we just modify the sound. Now, another thing that they can do is change the tuning and change the length. Because when we add sounds just like this on the sequence in this mode, and we uh, play it back, let me just do it like that. The pitch is always the same, right? So when we are standing in this mode, we just can hold the step and change the pitch or change the length. Now, to do this, we need to have the rec on. So I'm going to have the icon right there. It's going to be on. And now when I go to a step and I press and hold it, notice it's going to tell you, dude, th your, this note is going to be a C4. So this one is going to be changing the pitch. And as, as, I, as I move the A knob, it's just going to let you hear the different pitches. So maybe if I go to a different one, we can just, you know, change it to different notes and so on and so on and so on. Maybe I'm going to go with that one and I'm going to go all the way down. Now, if I play it back, we just get the different pitches. We're just modifying the pitch of the steps. Now, the other thing that this can do, and for this example, I'm just going to remove this steps. I'm just going to maybe keep keep this one and keep this one. So the A changes the pitch and the B is going to change the length. So again, rec is on. I'm going to be pressing and holding that step. When I move this, notice that some lights right here after this step, they go on. So this is the duration of the step. Uh, step. In this case, it's going to be the note. So if I make it uh, four like this, this note is going to last four. I'm going to be making something a little bit more obvious. I'm going to make it like three or seven steps long. So if I play it now, that is it is really long. And we could do the same with all the different notes. Maybe this one is going to be like maybe a duration of three. Right. So one thing that you need to be aware is that, of course, this is monophonic. This sound is going to go, maybe it's going to extend, but when it, uh, it reaches a new note, is this uh, note is going to die and this one is going to be playing back, right? Right. So if I go maybe to this one and I make it super long, like, you know, 16 steps long, it doesn't matter. This one is choking this one, the previous one, right? The previous note. Okay, so I'm going to start over. I'm going to be going to rec. The rec is on. And I'm going to be adding some, you know, some steps, some notes randomly. It doesn't matter. Just going to just gonna do something like that. It doesn't matter. So we know again that the A and the B can change, you know, the property of the sound that we are working with. And also when we are standing on the rec and we hold that step, it's going to be changing the pitch and it's going to change, change the, the step length. But that's when we are in a recording, right? Now, right now, I'm going to keep the rec off, right? We can do it with rec on still, you know, but I'm going to keep it off. So we are doing some playback. So what I will do, I will go to the rec and I'm going to press and hold it. So when I do this, what I can do now, I can modulate the A and the B knob. And remember, it's just whatever, you know, params for that sound. Not, not, I'm not talking about the pitch, I'm not talking about the length. So when you move this while the sequence is going, you're going to be recording the different motions that you do right here with your knob. And notice that we can see it right here moving. I'm going to do it again for the B. Right. So what we are doing while we are playing back, we are recording the motion that we are doing with the A and the B. So this is called motion sequence. Uh, right here is called param locking. It's just, you know, the same thing. Right. So you just need to select the sound and it just modulate with the rec, uh, pressing, holding, uh, pressing, holding the rec, the A and the B, and it will record this, you know, motion to the sequence. Right, so remember how the factory, how this uh, PO works. We have 16 or 15 different sounds, which are melodic. So we cannot use them all at the same time. It's just one single engine. And then we have the uh, percussion kit, which is going to be the 16. So if I play it back and I want to change the sound, just to see how the other ones sound, sound you know, we can. If I go to sound and select not the number one, which is the one we are using right now, I'm going to be selecting, I don't know, the six. We can audition all the different sounds 
even with the A modulation of the A and the B and keeping, of course, the sequence. So we can check and audition different sounds. Really cool. Alright, I'm gonna leave it there. I like that one. Okay. If you're wondering, do we lose the sequence if I go again, maybe to a different pattern? I'm gonna go to pattern number two. We get something else, but if I go back to number one, we just don't lose it. We just get it. Right. So again, this is how you do step recording. The other thing is going to be live recording, but first I want to show you how the sound 16 works, because it's just a little bit different from the uh, melodic uh, sounds. Okay, so let's talk about the 16, the sound 16 or the step 16. I'm gonna be, you know what, I'm gonna be starting on the, I'm gonna go to the, uh, you know, pattern number one, and I'm gonna start with the fresh sequence. So we have completely, uh, you know, completely nothing. So we have nothing. So I'm gonna stand on the 16 now. When we go to the 16, we can play all the different sounds that we have on that percussion kit. So the sound 16 or the uh, percussion kit is a completely different channel. If we create a sequence right here, it will not interfere with the melodic sequence that we have on the other ones. So what we can do right now is just, you know, start recording the way we did before and record the different sounds. But there's a catch, this, you know, so it's a little bit different. And all the different POs are just a little bit different. They work a little bit differently. So uh, let me just show you how this one works. If I go to rec the way we did before, we are standing on step recording. So if I add some steps just like we did before and I play it back, we're just going to be getting that sound which is like a bongo sound, let's say. And if I keep adding steps, we will always get the same sound. So how can we, you know, change it to a different sound? So this works uh, like we did on the, the melodic parts, you know, the melodic sounds, holding a step and changing the pitch. So right now the rec is on. I'm gonna be maybe, I don't know, holding that one. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go, maybe go to the second one, I'm gonna go to that one. And notice that when I press and hold it, something is happening, notice that all the lights go off when I press and hold. So now when I change this, this one will let you know, and you know, when you select it, it's gonna let you know which sound you are using. In this case, it's gonna be the number 8. If I change it, notice that it's letting you hear the sound that you are selecting, and you have 16. So you just need to choose the sound that you want the most. Let's say I'm going to be doing a 2, on this one I'm going to be doing, I don't know, an 11, and so on and so on. And if I want to add a step right here, again, just going to be changing to a different sound. And if I play it back, now we have, you know, different sounds. So this is how it works. You just go, add it, and you just change it to the sound you want to use, and then you use it as a, you know, as a rhythmical part, as a percussion part. All right, so one more thing. Uh, if I go to a drum sound and I play it back, whatever, you know, we are not on rec mode, right? Rec is not enabled now. If I play this, we get a different sound. So the A and the B will just change a property of the drum kit. And this is more like a global thing. Notice that this changes completely. And this more, uh, the B is more like the volume. So if I go to different sounds, it's going to sound way different. So now if I just, you know, maybe go to Rec On and I just add different sounds, it's just going to sound completely different. And again, with Rec On, then we can just select a different sound. And we are just going to get different things. It's not as complete as other POs in terms of, you know, the rhythmic, rhythmical part or the percussive part, sorry. Uh, but it's really cool, you know, that you get it. So now you can just maybe go to the sound, I don't know, one, which is the rhythm, the, the, the melodic part. And right here, you just can maybe just, just create something at the top, right? And it's like two channels running in parallel, the percussion and the melodic one. Right, so I'm gonna start with the new pattern. We are standing on the pattern number one. I'm gonna do key and I'm gonna do pattern and we start with a clear pattern. So we need to talk about live recording because it's a big part of this device. This is just a different way of recording. 
So you can add things while this uh, the the play is just going. It's really great. Now, you don't have a metronome right here, so it's a little bit hard that, you know, knowing where you are. You do have a visual metronome, but I don't know if it's just, you know, that much of a help. So what you could do, I'm going to be standing on the 16 right there, and I'm going to be adding uh, steps so we can really know where we are. Maybe I'm going to be just changing. Let me just change the properties of this. All right. So. You have that bongo sounding, you know, bongo sound. I'm going to be getting out of the wreck and I'm going to maybe go to, I don't know, the sound number one. All right, so this is going to be the sound number one. So when we play the 16 steps, we get the different, you know, the different pitch for the different keys. So I want to record it just like this. I don't want to add the steps and then change the pitch from, from, the, uh, from the A knob. So you can do this. What you will need to do in this case, I'm going to be doing some playing back. And I have, you know, the kind of a bongos in the back, just telling me where we are standing. So now what I need to do, I need to hold the wreck and then do some playing back. Notice that wreck is not on. When it's on, we are doing that, you know, step recording. In this case, we are doing live recording. So I'm going to be pressing and holding and I'm pressing and holding. So now I can. And it's just going to record it to the sequence. Now notice I'm now I'm just recording the same pitch. Now what we can do and for now, I'm just going to go to right on so I can remove the steps that I've added. I'm going to get out of the rec mode and I could do. And then we get it. All right. Now remember that by holding the rec and moving the A and the B, we just can record different, you know, modulations for the A and the B. We all kind of already talked about this, but this is how you do live recording. You just press and hold without the rec on and you just type whatever it is that you want and it's just going to go and do it. Now you can still, you know, edit this. I'm going to go to rec mode. So the rec is on. So let's say I want to change the pitch of this one. I'm going to do it like we did before. I'm going to press and hold it. It's going to tell you, dude, that's an F4. So maybe I want to change it to something lower. And it's going to let me do it. Same right here. Maybe this one is going to be high. Right. Maybe this one is going to be longer so we can change the length. Same for this one. I'm going to be changing the length. Right. So still, you know, we can reuse the things that we've uh, learned on the previous sections. Right. So that's it. That's pretty much the whole device. Now, still, we need to learn a couple of things because we have the effects and we have the play styles. So the effects is something that you uh, pretty much get on all the uh, pocket operators, but uh, on each pocket operator is just a little bit different. So an effects is something that we need to apply to a sound so we cannot hear it alone, just like, you know, we do with the sounds. So we apply it to a sound that we already have on the sequence. So what uh, we need to do, we just need to add them. So you do this while you're playing. So I'm going to get out of the rec mode. Notice I'm on right now. I'm off. So if I play it, we have the same thing we had from before. Uh, so now what we need to do, we need to select one of the 16 different uh, effects that you get available on this device. And if you go to the documentation, it's going to let you know, I'm going to put it right now on the screen, uh, the 16 different things that you can do. You, you can do distortion, bit crushing, a uh, low pass and so on and so on. So for now, I'm just going to go to play. I'm going to be playing this back. So you have the style and you have the key. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But, you know, I can go to style. And while I'm holding the style, I'm going to be maybe pressing and holding this one. So when I release it, it's letting me hear, you know, it's, it lets you hear what you what this is, is doing. So this one, I guess if I check the charge, the chart is a low pass filter. So it's just, you know, filtering everything. So when we do it, it's going to burn it into the sequence that affects, right? Still, you can change it to other effects by doing the same thing, pressing and holding the style and just maybe check other other ones. And it's just going to do it. Now, if you maybe let's say that you do something like that, right? And you don't like it. You just want to remove it. So by holding the style and waiting for a whole sequence, to, you know, uh, for the whole, you know, the whole pattern, the whole 16 steps by pressing and holding the style, it's just going to record nothing because you're not touching anything. 
so it will remove whatever effects that you recorded previously. So it's, again, very simple to do. So if you want to create something new, you just need to go press and hold the style and just record whatever, whatever you know, motion that you want to record uh, in terms of effects. So that's it. If you don't like it, press and hold, wait for a couple seconds, and it's just gonna delete the effects. So this is, you know, the effects, and it's something very common that you get on all the pocket operators. You get 16, and check the documentation if you want to know what the 16s will do. Right, so then you have the play styles. So the play styles are just like the effects. It's a variation that you get, kind of an effects that you get, but this one is going to play with the different things that you did right here. It's gonna maybe do an arpeggio with the sound that you have selected. Maybe it's gonna do a chord, maybe it's just gonna do different things. Now you, if you go to the documentation, there's no information about what you get, uh, you know, on the 16 types of play styles. But still, you know, you can, uh, you know, uh, just mess around with this and just get it. So uh, I'm going to be making sure that there are no effects, just to make it a little bit, you know, easier to hear. So if I go to key, this one is going to be the play style. So it works just like the effects. If I play and hold, and I'm not recording right now, so Rick, Rick is off, and I go to key, and I play a key, that is what it does. It is recording whatever the number two does to the sequence. So maybe I want to delete what I did, press and hold the key, and it's gonna remove it. Some other ones, maybe this one, what is it? It does that. So maybe I just, I want to create an arpeggio, it's just gonna do it. And you just can create combinations of maybe different things, you don't need to just, do, just to do one. Right. So it works just like the effects. If you don't want it, you just press and hold and wait, and it's gonna remove it. So like I told before, you don't get on the manual uh, an explicit list of what each effect will do. But you know, by playing it back, and just, you know, doing it, you're gonna be able to hear it. I like this one, which is the chord, the, the arpeggio. <laughs> So it's pretty creative, just a really cool, nice little, you know, thing. And again, all the pocket operators will do different things. Uh, this uh, pocket operator, uh, this is kind of a very specific to this pocket operator. So you don't get it on all the other ones, you just get it on this one. Right, so we know pretty much everything about about this device. We still need to talk about one little thing, which is copying patterns and then chaining patterns. I'm gonna be maybe going to maybe okay. I'm gonna stay on the pattern number one, which is the thing that we uh, did before. So I have that one. So I want to what I want to do. I want to chain different patterns, and I'm gonna give you a more practical example. Let's say that you want to create a song. So you cannot create a song with just 16 steps. Maybe you're gonna need more patterns so you can chain them. So, okay, so I'm going to be standing on the pattern number one. I don't want what I have right now, so I'm going to be going uh, to a key and then uh, holding and pressing the pattern. This is going to clear the pattern, cre clear the sequence. And I'm going to be creating some drums. I'm going to stand on the 16. It's going to give me all the percussive ones. And I'm going to be creating kind of a kick and snare deal right here. Okay, so I have something like that. This is going to be my pattern, my first pattern. So what I want to do, I want to take whatever I did right here and paste it on the pattern number two. I'm standing on the pattern number one right now. So we can copy and paste and just extend what we did on this pattern, right? So the way to do it is that first, of course, you need to make sure that you're standing on the pattern number one. If you're standing on that one, uh, you can grab whatever it is that you have right there and just paste it on some other place. It's a little bit tricky. You need to go to pattern, make sure you stand on that one. I'm gonna be holding that pattern and I'm gonna go to the right right here. I'm gonna press and hold the right and I'm gonna be pressing the number two. Once we do so, it's gonna kind of a blink. And if I play it back, look that we have that on the number two. And if I go to the number one, number two, sorry, we have that on the number two. Now, if I go to the number two, we have the same sequence. So you're just, you know, copy pasting indeed. So if I wanted to do the same thing, I want to copy the number two and paste it on the number three. I'm gonna hold the pattern, skip blinking. We're gonna hold the right and I'm gonna tap the number three. And if I go to the pattern number three, we have the same drum, you know, sequence. Cool. 
So now I'm going to be going to the number two and I'm going to be extending this to something else. Okay, so this is what, so this is my pattern number two. Right, we just add added some melodic sequence and now I'm going to go to the pattern number three and I'm just going to add more things. All right, so this is going to be my pattern number three. And I'm making, and I'm trying to make sure that is completely different from the other ones, right? So if I go to pattern number two, is I play it, it's just completely different. And if I go to pattern number one, it's just, you know, the drum, pattern number two, it's going to be that, and the pattern number three, is going to be completely different. Right. So this is what I want. I want to create a song. So the first one is the intro. Then let's say that the two is the verse and the three is going to be, I don't know, the chorus or something like that. Yeah, just let's just pretend right here. So how can we change the patterns? So the only thing that you need to do is you need to go to pattern and just press and hold and you need to hold, right? Just press and hold. So now you need to select and tap the order of the patterns and you can add multiple. So you can do up to 16. So let's say I want two, uh, you know, two rounds of the first one. I want four of the second one and I want three of the, maybe two of the third one, right? So I'm going to say one, two, then one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to say one, two. And once you're done, the whole sequence is going to start over. So when I release this, it's going to be one, two, two of this ones. And it's going to go and do four of the pattern number two. Almost there. And then two of the number three. And then go back to the, goes back to the beginning. Fine. So again, you can uh, chain up to 16 different patterns. Now, if you want to get rid of this, you just go to maybe the pattern number one, press and press the pattern. Maybe go to just number one, just tap it once. And it's going to kind of a reset everything back, uh, you know, to the beginning because you just have one single pattern. You're just not chaining. But again, you just can do whatever you want. Let's say you want the three, the one, the two, the one, the three, the two. And you can do all of this up to 16 different, you know, combinations. Right. Okay, so that's it. That's the factory. So hopefully you liked all of this. And if you learned something and you liked it, please like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you just maybe want to buy me a coffee, just to say thanks, you can go to the links of the description and you have links for PayPal, you have Google uh, YouTube Thanks, you have Patreon, and you also have a simple packs that I offer that maybe you want to, they're really cheap, that maybe you just want to maybe get one and just support the channel uh, that way, right? So see you on the next one.